Hello and welcome to another episode of The Pulse. I'm your host, Sam Red. Recently, we saw a tragic event with the bombing at the Boston Marathon. So we're here today at Camden Yards to talk to the professionals on how we keep our citizens and fans safe at large events. So don't go away. You don't want to miss this episode of The Pulse. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Pulse. I'm your host, Sam Red. My guest today is Mr. Vernon Conaway, Director of Public Safety and Security for Maryland Stadium Authority. Vernon, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So tell us what your job is here at, uh, at we're at Camden Yard, so tell us what your job is here. Yes, I'm the uh, Director of Public Safety and Security for the Maryland Stadium Authority, and I'm responsible for the 85 acres that is comprised of the Camden Yard Sports Complex. Okay. And does that include the M&T Bank Stadium also? That includes M&T Bank Stadium and Oriole Park at Camden Yards, as well as Camden Station, uh, Sports Legends Museum, and also the warehouse. Okay, and um, so what is your goal and your mission as, as a Director of Public Safety and Security at the stadium? Well, our ultimate goal is to provide a safe and secure environment for our fans, our employees, and the teams. Mm -hmm. uh, now, now um, we had a tragic incident in our country. Um, last week in Boston and uh, with a marathon. Um, how do you all take precautions to make sure that something like that doesn't happen at an event here in Baltimore? Sure, our, uh, our event planning, our security planning for events begins uh, weeks and even months in advance of the event. Mm -hmm. uh, and we work with uh, our federal, state, and local partners to develop uh, security assessments and security plans as well as with the uh, sports leagues. Major League Baseball and the uh, National Football League mm -hmm. and the teams themselves, again, to uh, work collaboratively to develop a security strategy for the complex. Okay, so let me clear that up. So, so the NFL and the Major League Baseball, they all have their own security plans in effect for events also? They do. Now, when the other teams come in town, do they bring their own, uh, they bring security with their teams also? They do. Okay, now like for example, um, the other night, I came to the game the other night, and I kind of noticed there was, it, looked, it seemed like there was a double checkpoint with bags and things like that when you came into the stadium. Uh, what are some of the things that people should or should know they can't do when they come into an event at the stadium? Sure, absolutely. Well, one of the things, uh, we do permit uh, bags uh, of certain sizes to be brought into uh, Oriole Park. Those bags are, uh, go through a screening and checking process. Right. And then uh, once allowed into the ballpark, we just ask fans to be cognizant of where their bags are. Mm -hmm. um, from time to time, you know, a fan may bring a bag in, leave the bag at their seat, go to the concession stand, mm -hmm. and return to find that uh, the bag has been reported as unattended. And, of right. course, unattended bags uh, will result in security and the police officers coming out and inspecting the bag and taking the appropriate measures to uh, safeguard the fans. And that's exactly what happened the other night. I was at the game and someone left a backpack and the people around that were concerned. And within a few minutes, um, your, your security people were right on it to make sure that, uh, that it wasn't something um, bad for the area. Um, when people come into the stadium, what are some of the things they can't bring when they come into the stadium? Sure, when, when they come into the ballpark, uh, we have a screening process. Mm -hmm. And that, that screening process is where we identify the things that are prohibited into the stadium and the ballpark. For the ballpark, they are allowed to bring in uh, bags of a certain size, mm -hmm. uh, basically a little larger than the pocketbook. Uh, no coolers, no hard-sided coolers, uh, no glass bottles, mm -hmm. uh, no open con containers. And uh, so we screen them there, and then once in the ballpark, you know, we want the fans to enjoy right. the game, but also be alert and uh, cognizant of their surroundings. If they see something suspicious, to immediately report it to a police officer, a security officer, or one of the uh, Orioles ushers. Mm -hmm. uh, all of our event staff, from concessions to facilities to maintenance to ushers, have been uh, trained and informed on how to handle those uh, reports and make sure that the appropriate response is taken. Okay, uh, now now when you have a game going on and uh, sometimes I think they're a little larger crowds than you than you have certain teams bring, bring larger crowds, um, do you add extra security? Like I noticed that um, that sometimes like when the Yankees are in town or Boston Red Sox, the rival teams, or I guess even Pittsburgh Steelers with the Ravens, 
Do you add extra security for events like that? Absolutely. A lot of things go into our, our policing strategy, mm -hmm. and we have a formula that we use. In addition to the size of the crowd, also the current threats and the threat picture, mm -hmm. not just within the region, but uh, nationally and internationally. And who are some of your partners? I noticed that, um, I mean, I've seen everyone from, well, you tell me. I mean, I mean, I've seen other jurisdictions and other law enforcement agencies here at the stadium during, during an event. Who are your partners? Sure, absolutely. For, for all of our baseball games here at the Oriole Park, uh, we have uh, Baltimore City Police Department uh, on hand providing uh, security, crowd management. Uh, we also have uh, Baltimore City Fire Department, uh, both fire prevention representatives as well as uh, medics uh, staged, ready to go here at Oriole Park in the event uh, that they are needed. And in addition to that, we also have the uh, uh, MTA police, uh, as well as supplement with uh, Maryland State Police. We also have uh, plain clothes uh, staff that are on site. Uh, we partner with uh, FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force, as well as Department of Homeland Security. Uh, again, those are our partners where you know we work collectively with them to uh, make sure we have uh, the most up-to-date information as it relates to uh, ongoing threats. Uh, and it's also important to note that uh, Oriole Park has an excellent track record. Uh, we're in our 21st year. Uh, no major security breaches or threats have occurred here at the, uh, the park or on the complex. And nowhere has there been any specific threat uh, involving Oriole Park or M&T Bank Stadium. That's great. Nothing like Memorial Stadium when you had an airplane crash into the stadium. Um, now, people come to a game, and they, they, the ultimate goal to come to the game is to have a great time. Um, and I think a lot of times people don't realize how much effort is, is, is put in place to make the event peaceful, enjoyable, to come, enjoy the game, and leave safe, safely. Um, do you do a lot of precautionary measures when it comes to prior to the game and, and then even after the event is over with? Sure, absolutely. And, and it's, it's very important to note that it's a binary responsibility for security at the ballpark. And I say binary because obviously this our, my staff, the security assessment team and the security team here at the uh, ballpark has a responsibility, but also it's the fans have a, a role and responsibility as well, whether it's uh, appropriate fan conduct as well as also taking responsibility for their surroundings and reporting those suspicious activities to the proper authorities. But, you know, prior to an event, like I said, it could be weeks or even months, depending on the event, uh, of pre-planning. And it begins with working with the Major League Baseball, uh, the Baltimore Orioles, as well as Baltimore City Police, Fire, uh, Emergency Management uh, representatives. And we sit down collectively and we, we look at the, the threat assessments as well as our vulnerabilities. And we develop uh, our strategy and our security plan based on that information. Okay. And when you have a situation like the one that took place in Boston, do you look at that and go back and, and, and reevaluate what happened there and add that as part of your regular training or, or, or putting new uh, plans in effect also? A a absolutely. We look at events that occur all across the country and, all, and internationally at other outdoor venues, uh, commercial facilities, and we take those lessons learned and we apply them here in our security plan at the complex for both the 24-7 security operations as well as the event operations. Okay. Now, um, Ravens win the Super Bowl, and you got a big victory party and parade. You had a madhouse down here that day. Um, how do you keep something like that from, from taking place uh, next year when the Ravens go to the Super Bowl? It, it was a very celebratory environment, and uh, it, it was amazing to see the outpouring of fans, and uh, we thank our fans for being responsible and uh, making that a very celebratory experience. And also, uh, commend the uh, Baltimore Police Department because uh, there was a, a lot of fans both inside the stadium as well as outside the, uh, the stadium and also along the parade route. And they did an excellent job in maintaining the law and order. Again, it goes back to that binary responsibility. The, the fans themselves also had a responsibility and they performed superbly. Okay. Now, Vernon, you all just don't do baseball games and, um, and, and football games here. You do other events also because isn't this part of the um, – the Grand Prix um, track also? Absolutely. Aside from our wonderful football games and our baseball games that we have 
the complex also hosts several other events, uh, Monster Jam in June, the Baltimore Marathon in October, and we also have the African American Heritage Festival. So there's a lot of other events in addition to the sporting events occurring here at the complex, as well as uh, you know the warehouse serves as pit row for the uh, Grand Prix. And of course, we stage a lot of the Grand Prix uh, teams and assets here on the complex. Okay. And again, we work closely with all of our public, our federal, state, and local partners. Okay. So you're you're pretty new at this job here. You've only been here for what now? I have been here for 18 months. Okay. All right. And. Um my good friend uh, Jim Schlesser was here uh, before you were. Yes, uh, where were you before you came here? Uh, before here, I, I spent 26 years with the Maryland State Police. So you've been well trained and, and, and ready for this job when you came on the board, huh? Yes, sir. All right. Well, uh, is there anything that you might want to say to the, the viewing audience about um, coming to a game or coming to an event state here at the stadium just to enjoy themselves and to be safe? Sure, I, absolutely. You know, first and foremost, we want them to come and enjoy the experience. Right. And uh, again, be alert, uh, be aware, and report any suspicious activity uh, to police officer, security officer, or a, a crowd management person. Okay, well, um, let me say this. I, I come to the games and, uh, and football games often, and because of the uh, professionalism that you all have here in keeping the citizens and the fans safe, I very rarely think about uh, you know, the, the fact that um, a situation in Boston takes place, but I know that there are what we would call guardian angels watching over uh, folks at the stadium. And I know um, that you all do a great job, especially with the Baltimore City Police Department. As a matter of fact, the second part of our segment here today is going to be with the Baltimore City Police Department and what they do to keep citizens uh, safe during large events in Baltimore City. I think Boston kind of um, caught a lot of people off guard last week, even though we li know we live in that time and that era, uh, but the to be running in a, in a marathon and crossing the, um, the finish line and then something like, like that, as tragic as that happens, we all have to be vigilant and, and be careful to enjoy ourselves. And we always say, you see something, say something. So I want to thank you for what you do here at the, uh, the Stadium Authority. And uh, thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. All right, thank you. Don't go away. We'll have more on The Pulse. Hello and welcome back to The Pulse. I'm your host, Sam Red. Joining me now is Captain Gordon Schuterberg of the Baltimore City Police Department Special Ops Unit. Captain, welcome to the show. Thanks, sir. So we've been talking today about the uh, how to keep our citizens and our, our fans safe at different events uh, in light of the situation that had, took place in Boston last week. Um, tell me what Baltimore City Police Department does with large events like Artscape and the Grand Prix and things like that. Well, the beauty about those events is they're annual events. Uh -huh. So we have uh, template plans already in place to deal with the size of the crowds, the ingress, egress of the crowds, and things right. of that nature. And we also have intelligence sections that constantly scour to make sure if there's a, a specific threat to those locations or not. So typically what will happen is as much as six months out of an event, even if it's an annual event, you'll start to have meetings to start to set up the security process. And we work closely with the Office of Emergency Management uh, Baltimore City Fire right. and all the city partners, all the city agencies, as well as any state or federal officials that we may uh, deem necessary to come in and help us out. Okay, now lately we've got more events coming to Baltimore. Um, the Grand Prix, which comes through this area, uh, I think this is one of the pit stops right here. Um, and you've got um, Artscape and you've got all kinds of events. Now, when an organization or someone comes in to uh, have a, uh, an event, they have to go through Baltimore City Police Department, correct? They have to follow uh, permits through the city, um, and the permit process goes through several different stages. But yes, the police department has a role in whether the permit gets issued okay. or not issued. All right. Now we too have a marathon coming up in a couple of months. Um, will you all take the events of last week and use those as part of your training for uh, the upcoming marathon? Yeah. Yes, and absolutely. Um, what we do is we try to look at. Uh, other cities, right. other states. Um, if en if anything occurs or doesn't occur, we reach out to them and say, "How do you guys plan for this? Mm -hmm. Or what do you do in the event something like this happens?" So we're we're kind of all on the same page across the country, and we can learn from other people's lessons. Um, so with, with the incident that occurred in Boston, it will certainly come into play for us when it comes to our planning section okay. for the marathon. Now, now one of the things that was talked about last week um, was the fact of backpacks being placed with bombs in them. Um, 
we have a bomb squad here with with the police department. And but uh, also, tell me about the uh, the the, the dogs that we, that you all use to uh, to sniff out bombs and things like that. Yeah, they have EOD dogs, explosive dogs, and they work hand in hand with our bomb techs. Mm -hmm. So they're they're always deployed in uh, in teams. The dog with the tech. Mm -hmm. So if the the dog will come sweep an area and. Uh, once the area is swept, we'll try to lock the area down mm -hmm. so nobody can come in and place sure. something behind. Sure. Now, that's a lot easier done in a controlled access environment right. than it is along a, a marathon route or something along those lines. But if if, uh, if the dog were to indicate on a package or something along those lines, then the techs would come out mm -hmm. and evaluate. They're, they work side by side. Now, you've you got many uh, different units in the police department. you got your air and everything else. Who else, uh, what are the areas or divisions of the police department take place in these events also? Well, I, com I command the Special Operations Section, which has the helicopter, the Marine Unit, which is out on the water, the SWAT Team, uh, and of course the Canine Program and the Emergency Services Unit. These are all integral parts of the tactical response of the city. Mm -hmm. um, that coupled with patrol and the Detective Division, uh, we, we work uh, in unison to make sure that, that we have uh, as much security out as we can possibly right. have out and make the event as enjoyable you know, that's still part of it. People have to be able to come and enjoy it. You can't throw right. up an iron curtain. Sure. So we do everything we can from the police department standpoint, the intelligence section, the detective section, all this other, all these other entities within the police department, also at the state and federal levels. All these partners come in and uh, we plan, as I said, well in advance and we try to make it as comfortable as everybody to come down where they feel safe. But I think as earlier stated by Vernon in your previous section, really all that is doesn't matter if the public's not paying attention to sure. the surroundings. Sure. They absolutely have to be uh, the eyes and ears of the police department sure. out there in public safety. Sure. And as we said earlier, if you see something, you say, say something. something. And not just during an event, but that's just in your everyday walking around the harbor. Well, the weather's, I guess, sooner or later going to get warm right, out. Right. Um, what about with the inner harbor area and keeping that area? You got a lot of tourists coming in town. You got people who just come down to the harbor just to hang out. What about that area? Yeah, the uh, the inner harbor has its own unit designated to it. It's under the command of a lieutenant under the Central District uh, Patrol Division. Um, as the events in the summer increases, if we're anticipating more people, we deploy more resources mm -hmm. down there. Uh, the helicopter plays a, a big part in the aerial surveillance of the of the uh, harbor critical structures as well as the marine unit and we also partner with the uh, Department of Homeland Security uh, as far as boats with the U.S. Coast Guard and different things like that sure. so the larger the event the more resources we pull in and uh, we always keep a heavy presence of police officers down there particularly on the weekend to ensure when the public comes down they see police they feel comfortable in the environment and if anything were to occur God forbid we'd have a response plan in place for it. And you, you partner with other jurisdictions also? We do. Uh, we work regularly with uh, the surrounding jurisdictions as well as uh, state police uh, and federal resources as well. No single police department post 9-11 can do this on their own. Mm -hmm. You have to rely heavily on your partners. And right. then, you know, when they call on you, you have to be there for them. And when you call on them, they'll be there for you. Okay. Now, one of the things that, um, that helped capture the, uh, the, 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 the bombers in Boston last week were modern technology cameras, uh, handheld cameras by, by citizens, and also the cameras that up. And our city has uh, yeah. City Watch and things like that. What, how do you partner with them when something is going on? City Watch monitors all the channels that any, and the City Watch program is throughout the city and it's mm -hmm. heavily invested in downtown Baltimore. Right. So you'll have somebody monitoring the camera system 24 seven. So if a call for service comes out or they're just randomly looking through the cameras and they pick up something, they'll radio to right. that patrol uh, unit to go out there and check it out. All right. so, so the best thing to tell the bad guys is you're not going to get away with something. No. You know, somebody's going to see, we're going to see somewhere, uh, the best thing to do is just find another job, right? right. Uh, and, 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 and we learn more every day when we have tragic incidents take place. And you all, I'm sure, are steady doing training every all the time, right? Yeah, every every part of the police department trains on a consistent basis, and and uh, you hit the nail on the head. You have to look at other incidents that have occurred across the country and learn from them, both good and bad. Right. A lot of these police departments, a lot of police departments, uh, local, state, and federal, are doing things very, very well. But even doing things very well or to the extreme that we do them, sometimes we still lose sure. the initial battle. Sure. And so you go take a look at them things and say, okay, could we do something different? Could we have done something differently to prevent this from happening 
you know, from that snowball starting to roll downhill. So that's what you, you constantly do that. You're constantly going after um, uh, case studies and doing evaluations of different incidents. And, you know, you have the Preakness coming up and uh, two weeks prior to the Preakness, you have the Kentucky Derby. Right. So it just makes sense to reach out to Louisville PD and mm -hmm. say, okay, what do you guys have in place? You know, what do you have going on for yours? Is it similar to what we have right. for traffic and everything else? And then we learn from them and we bring it to us. And then we then follow that up by going to New York a couple weeks later where one of three cities right. were part of the Triple right. Crown. Right. So you go up there and you figure out what did you do, what is your best practice, and how do you apply it here to make it as enjoyable and safe for the people as you can. How many years you got on the force? Uh, finishing 20 here shortly. Okay, all right. Well, Captain, I want to thank you for what you all do, um, Baltimore's finest. The great job you all do, along with, uh, with Vernon Conway, working together to keep our citizens and our fans safe when they come here for an event and enjoy an event and leave and go home safely. Um, I think people will be more aware every time something like Boston happens. But to know that we've got professionals like you all watching and doing the job that you all do makes everyone feel a whole lot more comfortable. So I want to thank you for coming on the show. And anytime you got other stuff you want to talk about with the department, feel free to give us a call. We'll, we'll do. All thank right. you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Don't go away. We'll have more on The Pulse. I want to thank my guests Vernon Conway and Captain Shooterbird for coming on the show today and telling us how they keep our fans and our citizens safe at large events. So when you go out, have fun and stay safe. And as always in parting, stay safe, stay informed, and keep your finger on the pulse of our community.